Columbus, Ohio, the home of the Ohio State Buckeyes, the Big Ten ACC Challenge, presented by Dish Network, number two, North Carolina, taking on the unranked Buckeyes. And it's actually 6-2, to two, and Michigan State just picking up a win. But the ACC still has clinched the challenge for the ninth consecutive year. So conference pride reigns supreme in the ACC again. The Tar Heels in blue, and the Buckeyes in home whites get the first possession of the game. Michigan State very impressive in that victory. That's their first real statement win this year. Lawson not starting, Dan. Ty Lawson with a sprained ankle, suffered Saturday in the game against BYU, is not in the starting lineup tonight for North Carolina. Bobby Fraser, the junior who got the bulk of the minutes at the point in Vegas, will take his place in a lot of new faces for Ohio State. Gone Odin. Gone is Conley. Gone is Cook. But keep an eye on 31. Costa Kufis, one of the most talented freshmen in the land. Got a big guy can score. He's got great offensive ability. Hansbro working hard for that shot. Chased down the offensive rebound and is blocked from behind on the dunk attack. How about that? The one thing you'll see a change in styles for Ohio State. They will utilize the zone much more than last year where they're a man pressure team. Hasbro tries to get in the gap of the zone, then he comes up with the offensive rebound, and there's Hunter, who's an outstanding shot blocker. The foul was on Dion Thompson of North Carolina. So Fraser at the point for the Tar Heels. Jamar Butler with the ball right now for Ohio State. Moved off the ball last year because of Conley. Back at the point now and an early foul on Wayne Ellington. Man, they have to find a way to get a third score. Doris, they got to get a third score when you look at Ohio State. We know about Kufis and certainly Butler, but they got to find the third. And Lawson, Doris, not playing. Well, according to Roy Williams, 99% sure he will not see time based on the fact that he could not push off that right ankle. He's participated to a limited degree over the last couple of days in practice. This guys, we'll see how it goes. Wide open from the wing, the three goes down for David Lighty. Tell you, Lighty's the guy they told us has to step up and give him that third score. Thompson doesn't get the bounce. Rebound, Buckeyes, another Carolina foul. This one on Hansbro. Boy, Williams kids had to play with Al Lawson against BYU, a team that really impressed us. BYU with really an underrated Trent placed it in the middle. Challenged North Carolina, but Carolina in the last seven minutes really played terrific defense, and that was the difference. Three team fouls in the first minute and 15 seconds on North Carolina, ranked second as of yesterday. UCLA nudging just ahead of them, breaking the tie for top spot. Good box out there by Thompson, and back come the Tar Heels. Bobby Fraser, solid ball handler, get him into their offense, but they'll have to utilize five on five a lot more than they will transition lanes. Hansbro surrounded inside. Turns it over. Lighty with the strip. Played a lot of minutes last year. They lose Conley, they lose Odin, but they also lost a great scorer, Ron Lewis. Yeah, Ivan Harris as well. They Lewis. lost five key players. Kufus leaves the jump hook short. Kufus very skilled offensively. From Canton, Ohio, of Greek descent, his mother born in Greece, and a guy who's equally comfortable with his back to the basket or out on the perimeter. Yeah, he's an inside-outside performer, probably playing a Greek, Greece national team. Another turnover. Ohio State is showing a zone look that they brought out for the NIT and it is confusing the Tar Heels a little bit right now. Ellington's got to be effective against the zone. they got to find some shots for Ellington. Get some ball movement. They're matching up really well out of the 1-2-2. It starts in the 1-2-2. And reaching in, John Diebler is called for the foul. Fat Mott has done a phenomenal job since arriving in Columbus. He's had to battle some back surgeries. Two back surgeries this summer, four in his life. He's got a brace on his right leg, suffering from a condition known as drop foot. He's got no feeling, no control over his right foot, has to wear a brace. He said he just went from the high top brace down to the low cut brace, but he still needs it in order to be able to move around at all. He's had several surgeries, had it initially at age 15. Yeah. This problem. There's that zone, very active, trying to match him on the wings. Got to get ball movement. Can't go side to side. You got to attack gaps and seams and overload. And you can see it's really making the Tar Heels think right now. Hansbro's gone to the bench right away as Ellington knocks down the jumper. And that's the guy we just talked yeah. about. We got to get him shots. He's one of the real pure shooters in America. 
He's the Duke, baby. He's the Duke shooting the track. <laughs> it's string music when he lets it go. Averaging 17 points per game in the early going. John Diebler, a guy who comes into Columbus with an extraordinary reputation as a high school scorer, 41 points per game last year, led the nation, but just four for 36 shooting the ball early this year as the 15-footer goes down for Deion Thompson. Thompson is in an offensive presence. Stepping in from him and right and went on to the NBA. You know, Diebler is 2 for 25 now shooting threes. But he's an effective shooter if you watch him in practice. I will tell you this. When Butler came here, he missed 24 of his first 27 shots as a freshman. And then he ultimately, second year, was one of the top three-point shooters in the conference. Ginyard misses the three. So keep an eye on Diebler, number 33 for Ohio State. Thad Mata says he just needs one to go down. And they think that everything will sort itself out. They don't believe it's a confidence issue. He threw it out of bounds. Really struggling. Broke the all-time record in the state of Ohio. 3,208 points. A one-point lead for Carolina early here in Columbus. All a part of Jimmy B. Week here on the ESPN Family of Networks. Brian Byrne, the studio with this update. The upset is complete. UMass and Syracuse. Gary Forbes to Chris Lowe lays it up and in. UMass wins 107 to 114 threes. They made 29 threes in the last two games. Dan and Dick back in Columbus. A wild game up in Syracuse. Both teams, UMass and the Orange, reaching triple figures and a pretty entertaining start here in this game. Remember, like, we did this game last year uh, down in Chapel Hill, one of the most entertaining games we saw all season. Yeah, it was up and down the floor, played without owning that game, but it was a transition game. Right now, without losses on the floor, that means North Carolina has got to get more productivity out of their five-on-five half-court game than attacking that zone. They're not going to get as many easy layups in transition. Lawson gives them that ultra-quickness that jet. Ty Lawson rolled his right ankle Saturday night, two minutes into the game against BYU. He did practice today, but not, didn't do everything, didn't do it at full speed. And Roy Williams said that Ty Lawson just not able to go. They spoke before the game. It was a game-time decision. Lawson didn't start. Unlikely to play. Bobby Fraser, number four, handling the point. Changed the complete complexion of the basketball team with a kid like that out of the lineup. Fraser misses an open look. Hansborough has returned. Misses the follow, and the rebound ripped down by Dallas Lauderdale, a 6'8", 260-pound freshman. He just laid a big screen up on top. Matt Terwilliger is into the game as well for Ohio State. Lighty known more as a defender. Good matchup between him and Danny Green. Terwilliger, no. And a strong rebound in traffic for Alex Stevenson. They think Lighty's going to be one of the best defensive players in the Big Ten. Stevenson couldn't get that jump hook airborne. And it'll be a held ball situation. It will stay with Carolina as we go to Doris Burke for more on Taiwan Lawson. Well, guys, Roy Williams told me earlier he believes they can still run their break effectively, albeit at a little bit different tempo. What he was most concerned about is this 1-2-2 zone and getting into the gaps. He said, I don't want to settle for jump shots. I want to slash. Dick, that's where your G&G &G guys, Green and Ginyard, have got to play. G squared got to really produce. You're right. They're going to get some point production out of Green. Right now, Stevenson looked like he was the guy setting up near the foul line, the guy they're trying to get the ball into. Now it's Hansbro, and the foul line jumper's a little bit strong, but another offensive rebound, this time Danny Green. Ellington. And Carolina missing some good looks early. Well, Ellington's the kind of guy you want taking that shot. That's a high percentage shot for him. North Carolina, which shot 71% last week against Old Dominion, 2 for 10 so far tonight. But Ohio State doesn't have anybody near the offensive glass on any of these misses. Well, in their loss against Texas A&M, they shot 24%. That was the difference. They couldn't yeah. make shots. Texas A&M, very physical, very experienced team with Joseph Jones, Carter, Sloan. And then they got the big freshman, DeAndre Jordan, in the middle. Very good team, Billy Gillespie left Mark Turgeon. Lighty from the corner. Got it. That's big. That's big. They can get his confidence going scoring-wise. It's been really offensively Butler and Kufus most of the year. Lighty averaging 10 points per game, a 6'5 sophomore out of Cleveland. That zone is very active. Yeah. Playing with a lot of confidence. 
They used it a lot in the NIT season tip-off. Hansbro again, just trying to force his way through the defenders. Has it a block from behind. I thought there might have been some contact right there. He's trying to step in the gap. Tyler Hansbro, certainly one of the premier big players in America. It'll be Carolina basketball with 18 on the shot clock. A lot of size on the interior, whether it's Terwilliger, Lauderdale, Kufus for Ohio State. Buckeyes had so much success last year. Conley at the point. Butler moved over to the two slot. Now Butler's going back to the point. He's a combo going. Quinton Thomas into the point right now for Carolina. Hansbro gets free. Nice ball movement against the zone that well, time. Did a terrific job overloading against the zone and sliding Hansbro right down the gutter. Danny Green with a nice feed. This game is tied at six. Six and a half minutes in here in Columbus. See, so far you see it how Carolina has to really execute in their half-court game. Evan Turner, refreshment number 21, in for the Buckeyes as Butler buries the three. He became, in their last game, Ohio Ohio State's all-time leader and made three-pointers. Amazing for a guy that missed 24 of his first 27 shots when he was a freshman. And he's trying to give that confidence the same comment to Keeble. A reach-in foul going against the Buckeyes. Watch this right here. Hasbro's going to go right down the gut of the defense. Right to the gut to the basket. Good job bringing it to the baseline. Drawing two people. Sliding him right down the lane. Foul on Evan Turner. His first. Boy, good active hands by Ohio State at the defensive end. Playing with a lot of emotion yep. here. They're feeding off this crowd. We're ranked until they got blown out by AM in New York. What a block by Stevenson. Stevenson blocked shots. Thompson's more of a score. Both guys bring a different. Hansbro from 17. Wide open. Hansbro improved his perimeter shot. To me, he'll be the America's premier player. I think you're looking at, ultimately, the national player of the year. Averaging 23 points and 9 rebounds per game. He was my player of the week on my That's website right. this week. You went and saw that. I saw that. Kufus inside. He's been quiet early. Looked like he took a shot in the face. He might be a little bit rattled on his way back down the floor. Going to be a physical night for Costa Kufa spending if he spends any time around Tyler Hansbrough. See, patience against that zone is very important. Green has improved his long-range jumper. We just talked a moment ago about how Green's got to give him that perimeter yep. shot. They're showing a lot of patience against the zone. Green averaged five points per game last year. He's at 13 points per game this year. That's a good sign for White Wings. The kids aren't panicking. Terwilliger open. A three not there for him and another rebound for Stevenson. See, you don't see the ball really flying up the court that you would see with Lawson. Same with UCLA with Collison. Yep. He may be coming back against George Washington. Poor Carl Hobbs. <laughs> they're, they're playing tonight, and Aboya says he's going to play with uh, with a mask on. Ginyard penetrates and gets the bounce. I love the G and G guys. They go back to back. Ginyard and Green. They need some PR, man. They need some love. Both guys play so hard. Come on, Dan Schumann. You always <laughs> want to talk about hands, bro. Who fish? Talk about the real couple. Hey, you're guys. doing a pretty good job all by yourself, my friend. A 7-0 run for Carolina. A wild off-balance shot by Lighty. He gets knocked down. Back up in a hurry. It's Lighty on the drive, and we've got to travel. So Carolina has scored the last seven points. That modest team now down by four. Jim was a man that just wrote down note cards, and all through his life, he would write down, you know, I want to play the 9 o'clock game in Madison Square Garden, and I want to win a national championship, and I would find these little note cards in his coat pockets when I would take them to the dry cleaners, and the last one I found that I pulled out was, you know, find a cure for cancer, and that was, that was a tough one. 
what it's all about. It is Jimmy V week beginning tonight at 7 o'clock and running right through the Jimmy V Classic on Tuesday night at Madison Square Garden on ESPN. Join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Pick up the phone, get online. Uh, there is no bigger week, no bigger cause closer to your heart than this one. Well, I'll tell you this. The people on the board of directors do such a great job, headed by Bob Lloyd, Nick Valvano, the entire family, John Saunders, Harry Rhodes. The list goes on and on. They do an amazing job. And I'll tell you this, cancer's in for its biggest fight because we're not going away. We're going to raise those dollars, and we're going to help all those people that are battling that dreaded disease. The women's Jimmy V, by the way, is Monday night at Rutgers. Maryland and Rutgers. Doris will be a part of that. Time now for a Sports Center 30 at 30. Let's go to Ryan Burr. ESPN.com's Pat Forty reporting LSU has granted permission for their football coach Les Miles to speak to Michigan, but not until after the SEC championship game. LSU also has plans to meet with Miles about an extension. Twins A's Johan Santana, popular man, the Yankees and the Red Sox both in trade talks for the former Cy Young winner. Sports Center after this game. Stay current. ESPN News always on. Guys. I'll tell you this, Ryan, just like Roy Williams, the chance to go back home to your alma mater, Mr. Miles, if Michigan wants him, which I think they do, he will be the next coach of Michigan. He played there, his wife is from there, he was an assistant there, he would act in Ann Arbor, just like Roy couldn't say no when North Carolina called, and he left a great job in Kansas, and he loved Kansas. Danny Green commits the foul, sending Costa Kufus to the line for Ohio State with more on the seven foot freshman. Let's go to Doris Burke. Well, guys, you are both well aware. Cancer strikes one of every two American men in this country. Costa Kufus, his father died when he was nine years old of liver cancer. I said, what's your most prevalent memory of your dad? He said, very simply, playing catch with baseball out in his front yard, guys. My dad has so many people battling that disease. I met a beautiful young girl recently, seven years old, Cindy Sims, who's battling the disease from out of the Tampa, Florida area. Frazier's three will bounce out of bounds. It stays at this end of the floor. Thad Mata was politicking for Buckeye basketball, you but know, it stays with the heels. Since you mentioned the V Foundation, I just wish people would help me in my goal to get $1 million for pediatric cancer to help little kids like Sydney who are battling that disease in memory of Peyton Wright who lost her life at age five in May. And you'll be hearing all about the various ways you can get involved all through Jimmy V League running through Tuesday. Just go to my website, digvitalonline.com. You'll see Peyton's picture, and it tells you how you can make a donation and where to send the money. Butler driving on Fraser. He's terrific. Butler's a combination guard, has great quickness. He's a catalyst for this club. He's the key to them really making a run in the Big Ten, which they'll have a chance because the Big Ten is not dominant. Indiana, Michigan State, very good, but are beatable teams. They're the only two who have wins for the Big Ten in the challenge so far as Frazier misses the three. Both of them home court wins. The ACC has already clinched the challenge for the ninth consecutive year, regardless of what happens in the final games tonight. Butler, wide open. Hunter with an acrobatic attempt at a follow. Frazier's got to make some of those threes because it would stretch the defense and let Hansbro get some good looks inside. Ellington wide That's open. Big. That's big. I tell you, ultimately, they can break the zone by shooting over the top of it. You'd like to get into a gap and see and get layups, but if you've got a guy like Ellington, you let him stroke it. How about the big three? He hit late to clinch the victory against BYU in Las Vegas. He did the same thing against Davidson. Yep. Duke's got a battle with Davidson coming up. Nice pass entry. Razor to Thompson. That was part of their transition game, Dan. They got the ball up the court quickly, beat the zone before it was able to get set up. Timeout, Ohio State. Five quick points for the Tar Heels as they open up a lead against the Buckeyes here in Columbus. And welcome back to Columbus, and let's check out. They do it as well as anybody did. Carolina well, getting out of the break. Well, it starts with, first of all, the pass off the break, then they bring it up the court, the sideline. They usually have a trailer, and they brought it right up to Thompson for the layup, and they beat the zone before it was set up. That's the best way. See, that's where Lawson would go. He beat that zone before that zone would ever set up. He's a blow. I would love to see a race with the basketball between Lawson, Rose, and Collins. Yeah, well, you might have your chance. Those are three elite teams, and they might wind up 
playing against one another sometime later on in the season. Good for Carolina. Just like it's good for UCLA, they'd love to have Collison, but boy, they got a tough win against Michigan State last week without their point guard for Carolina to gut out a win against BYU and play tonight without loss. And it's the kind of thing that could hurt you now but help you later. Exactly. You know, being number one now, as we say, is not really important. Diebler, another miss. He's got to keep shooting. He's got to keep shooting. Ohio's all-time high school leading scorer, Kufus, with a miss. Four for 37 now, shooting the ball, but he's too good a shooter. He's going to play for 10 of practice today. And it did not touch anybody as it goes back over to the Buckeyes, and we go to a media timeout here in Columbus. The visiting Tar Heels ranked second are up five early. This ESPN telecast is available in stunning high definition on ESPN HD, presented by Olivia. Let's go to Ryan Burr in the studio with an in-game update. All right, thanks a lot, Dan. Texas A&M versus Alabama, the year of the freshman, DeAndre Jordan. The big man shooting a very high percentage thanks to shots like that one. 21-16, Aggies on top early. Dan and Dick, back to you. Well, Ryan, Texas A&M was so impressive in New York. They clobbered Ohio State in the championship game of the NIT. And it's not just Jordan. Uh, Joseph Jones in the middle and Kirk and Carter, Carter. from outside there. They've got a quality team. Sloan is outstanding yeah. as well. Billy Gillespie left them a heck of a club. Billy had them playing very tough defensively. They had a terrific year. You had Jordan, who Billy had recruited. Turgeon will do a job there. Mark is a passionate guy. Played on Kansas as well, but was outstanding. Ohio State shooting just 20% from the field so far. Kufus from outside misses a three. They've done a great job matching up on Kufus, not allowing him to get great looks inside. Hansbro. And it's out of bounds. Back to Ohio State. Both teams struggling around the rim. Yeah, I really trying to take an acrobatic shot there. Hansbro struggling a little bit offensively, but so is Kufus. And now has not been able to score. You know, he was the MVP of the European Championships. He averaged 27 a game, 13 rebounds, the 18 and under right. championship. He was a dominant player. Greece finished second, won the silver medal, lost to Serbia in the championship game. Kufis is hoping to play for the senior men's national team for Greece as they try to qualify for the Olympics in the spring. He played really great against Syracuse and Dante Green and company led them to that victory in the semifinals of the NIT. They got blown out, as you said, by AM. They shot 24%, wow. and they're shooting 20% here tonight. Butler will improve those numbers just a little bit of driving layup. But they can't just rely on Butler. They got to get other people to start to get involved offensively. They can't win this game unless Kufus gives them the scoring on the interior. And right now, Kufus with just two points. Hansborough just two of nine from the floor for Carolina. Ginyard blocked by Kufus. Hansbro, good position this time. Double team blocked again. Defense doing a great job. Good timing. Shot clock at seven. Loose ball. Not leaving their feet. Buckeye hustle getting it done at the defensive end. I tell the Buckeye fans really love their Buckeyes. Football, basketball. Gene Smith's got a great, great athletic program, the AD. That's the ball inside. I watch the defense. See, they don't leave their feet. A terrific job by Kufis. Hunter is a shot blocker as well. I really like Kufis. Just watching his footwork. He's very skilled for a big player. I don't care. He hasn't scored yet. <laughs> Hansborough, a guy, Dick, he doesn't back down. He's going right at the defense no matter how big or how many there are. But that has worked against him so far here tonight. Diebler. Poof is the baseline jumper, and he remains called. Hunter, though, slams it home. Good offensive rebound by Hunter, and that's what they want from him. Get on the offensive glass, block some shots, play some defense. The Buckeye faithful are alive and really loud. They were doing a great job, but they were overloading on a baseline. A three from Ellington quiets the crowd. The Duke, string music again. The Duke, Ellington, maybe. He'll make you play some jazz the way he can shoot the three if you're a Carolina fan. The lead back to four. Five and a half to go in the first half. Ohio State has a long home court winning streak. 28 in a row at home, 30 in a row at home against non-conference competition to play number two Carolina tonight. Diebler, a three off the oh, dribble. Yes. Oh, yes. He's going to feel really good. 
He was two for 26 from the trifecta. He averaged 41 a game in high school, the all-time leading scorer in the history of Ohio basketball. A steal by Give Butler. A oh, a three on a three on one, Dick. He had Diebler for a layup. Wow. He had Diebler for a layup. Yeah. And that would have really helped his confidence to get two in a row. A three on one, and he pulled up for a three, and they don't get anything out of it. They got another shot now, though. Oh, wow, look at this range. Oh, yes, sir. As Thad Mata said, all he's got to do is knock down one. That'll help confidence. His dad was taking video of him in New York, going over his mechanics. Father coached him in high school at Upper Sandusky. Said he was fading away on his three. You can see the emotion. He feels like a different kid right now. He feels like a 1,000 pounds off his yep. back. There he goes, the all-time leading scorer. He shot down from, are you kidding me, Toledo? He shot down from Toledo, baby. Back-to-back -back threes, and look at the emotion. And you could feel this whole building just explode when Diebler knocked down the first one. You know, as a sophomore, he played against Daquan Cook in a state championship, Dayton Dunbar, and he scored 31. He didn't play in the highest level of high school competition, but he showed in that game he could play with the big guys. He was Mr. Basketball in the state of Ohio last year, beat out Costa Kufus for the award, although Kufus was a McDonald's All-American. Diebler wasn't. Now he dribbles it off his leg out of bounds. He's so pumped up now. Yeah, he right. wants the ball. He's so pumped up. That's a big lift. We talked about at the top of the show how they had to find a third score. And obviously, a kid that averages 41 a game yeah. has to be the guy. Scored over 3,000 points in high school. Green, that last foul a moment, a minute or so ago on him was his second, by the way. He'll penetrate and draw the foul. What an atmosphere here inside Value City Arena tonight. Ohio State's offense, they have been living and dying with the three. They've got five as a team, two of them by John Diebler. And the Buckeyes have themselves a two-point lead in front of a packed house tonight here in Columbus. Going into overdrive. Coming up on the UPS halftime report, continue to look at the ACC's domination of the Big Ten ACC Challenge, plus Syracuse stunned in the Carrier Dome. How did they lose to UMass? It's all coming up on the halftime report. Right back here in Columbus, a two-point lead for Ohio State over Carolina. Ohio State could football these days as well. They don't have a game coming up this week, but all of a sudden we got a lot of Oklahoma fans here in Columbus. Well, you know, hey, I was on Mike and Mike on Monday morning, like I'm every 725. I hope you listen to me. As we talked about, I think it's wrong. For example, you could benefit by not playing. If you're going to have the BCS, every one of the conferences should have a playoff. When it's all said and done, they can't hear me in Missouri, right? No. Can't you hear me? West Virginia Mountaineers will play the Buckeyes for the national championship. Missouri will not beat Oklahoma. Oklahoma just has that edge on them mentally, and I think they had to give so much emotionally against Kansas in that great win, and Missouri's had a phenomenal year, Chase Daniel, but I think when it's all said and done, it will be Oklahoma beating Missouri, and Ohio State will ultimately win the national title. There you go. Oh, oh really? State. Oh, you're Buckeyes win, the title. win it all. all right. Jim Book Trussell it. celebrate. Book it. Come and go off for dinner right now. <laughs> Get a new contract. See Gene Smith, the AD. He's a, terrific, he's a terrific yeah. guy. He did. He used to go. He went to Notre Dame. Played football at Notre Dame. Lighty penetrates. Little hesitation, and Stevenson, a good shot blocker, get a finger on that. Good job, defensive transition, getting back, making a play five on five. Bring it to the baseline and into Hesburn. No Kufus in the game right now. They're smaller. Terwilliger is in the middle. Kufus getting set to check back in. Ellington, who's penetrating, putting the ball on the floor more this year, floats one in from 10 feet. Yeah, good mid-range chopper. He's got the great rotation. Little rainbow. Into double figures goes Ellington. Diebler, no. Terwilliger blocked. Stevenson again. See, right now, with Kufus out of the game, I go to Hansbro inside. Bring it to Hansbro. Oh. Stevenson. Hansbro. 
Well, if they don't pass it to him, he can go get it himself. Well, you know, playing about the seven-footer now, Cooper's on the sideline. Hasbro now has people his size on the inside. Hansbro three for 11, six points. Away from the ball, a foul against the Buckeyes. See, the one thing, the second with his own, we watch the miss, nobody blocks out, he comes right down the gut, offensive rebound. Hey, I want to make it clear, you know, I have nothing against Missouri. I think they've had a great year, Chase Daniel. Yeah. But also, I'm serious about it. There should be uniformity. You should be able to benefit like Ohio State by not playing. Fade away by Hansbro. Tried to shoot it over the seven-footer. I really trying to make an audition to join John Saunders on the weekends in football. Are you? But I'm, I'm doing an audition. Call the boss of John, football. John is sitting in the studio right now. John's in the studio. He's doing halftime tonight, I and I, I can feel him. I, with his, I can feel him with his head in his hand, wow. shaking his head back and forth. John, right now. John, let me join you in football with <laughs> no Flutie shot. and company. Flat out, you have no, no shot. shot. <laughs> The foul goes against Stevenson to the Tar Heels. Here come the Buckeyes. A game of many runs back and forth. And Carolina's on one right now to reclaim the lead. Tufus. He's trying to force shots. Shots that aren't there. That's a little inexperienced. He's got to be patient. He knows he hasn't scored from the field, and he's trying to force some shots. Frazier's passed up a couple of looks. They go into the middle of the zone again with a miss for Thompson. Got a great look inside yep. for Thompson. Had a big game last year against Arizona when Brandon White couldn't play. Here's Butler, the senior leader, the point guard for the Buckeyes, calling for the high screen. Diebler. His third three of the game. Are you kidding me? He came into this game, people. Hear me. Two for 24 shooting threes. Two for 24. Four for 35 overall. He's made three threes tonight. Three of six from three. Three of six overall. Knocked it away from Fraser, who gets it back. This could be the coming out party for John Diebler and his career. Fraser misses the three. Long rebound of the Buckeyes. on the rim and comes off to Fraser. Diebler had the open look. I'll tell you one thing, he's not hesitant. No. It was a good look. And every time he gets a touch now, 19,000 people stand up as one. Ellington, tough shot. Butler. He's one tenacious kid, Butler. Strong drop. What a move. Terrific change of direction. He just blew by the defender. Showed his experience. He knows what people has been going through because he went through it as a freshman. Watch the change in direction. He goes right by Ellington. Ellington plays mandatory defense in that situation. For more on the senior, let's go to Doris Burke. Well, that kind of explosion, guys, thanks in large part to minus 20 pounds at the behest of head coach that Mott. I asked him where else he felt it. He said a lot more stamina. He is explosive going off the bounce, guys. Yet in his lifting in terms of the bench press, when they test him at the beginning of the college basketball season, he is still as strong. Lifts 185 pounds 23 times, as many as anybody on the team. He's Double missed, figures for Butler. He's Mr. Basketball on a high school level. They get all the Mr. Basketballs. Now, Fab Mott is locking up the state. B.J. Mullins next year. Yeah. From out of here in the suburbs of Columbus, a 7-foot-260. Hansbro with one of his rare clean looks here tonight. Well, they had the 45-degree angle for the great look into Hansbro. And he's going to finish. He plays so hard. Look at the way his eyes yeah. focuses. He concentrates. What a week for Carolina. Beat BYU to win the Las Vegas Invitational at Ohio. State Kentucky tonight, Saturday. At Kentucky Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. One of my favorite places, Rupp. They really have a passion and love for basketball. It's going to take a little time to play without Jasper, without Meeks. Got to get the shot off here. And it goes! Oh, you it serious? goes off the glass! Are you serious? He couldn't make the shot in the first five games. Oh, they're rocking and rolling in Buckeye land. You can't be serious! And then... Are you serious what we're saying? I think it Both just happened. Glass. It I, just happened. I think he's out of the slump. He's four, out of the slump. Four threes for Diebler. Here's Doris Burke with that model. It has been a struggle for your young man, John Diebler. What's your reaction to him making shots? Well, I couldn't be happier for him. I need 20 more minutes of it, though. I'll tell you that. We're, uh, you know, our defense has been pretty good to hold him to 29 points. We, we just gave him an easy one on the same damn play Texas A&M ran against us. We're going to get that correct. Good luck in the second.
Boy, you talk about a coach working as hard as his players. Look at the sweat Pat Mata's got going. John Diebler with four threes, including one that banks in at the horn to give Ohio State a lead at halftime over the number two team in the country, the North Carolina Tar Heels. We're at halftime of the Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dish Network. The Buckeyes by three. Now back to John Saunders with the UPS Halftime Reports. Here with Digger Phelps and Jay Bellis. And Jay, I'll begin with you because before this game, you showed us at the chalkboard exactly how North Carolina runs their secondary offense and runs up and down the floor. Well, Ohio State has not allowed them to do that. Yeah, we talked about it being a half-court game. If Ohio State can take them out of transition, take them out of their secondary break, and make them run their sets, that's the best opportunity they have. Make it a half-court game, and that's exactly what Ohio State did in the first half. I thought the zone was a great call by Thad Mata because it slows down North Carolina. They can't really run sets. They run their zone offense. And what happens against zone, you have a tendency to stand around. And North Carolina did a lot of standing around. They settled for jump shots. I expect them to play better in the second half. I mean, that, that was a tremendous performance in the first half by John Diebler. I mean, knocking shots down, especially off the glass at the end. North Carolina's going to guard him better in the second half. But also, when you don't have a tie to Lawson, you can't break that zone. And I think that's one of the issues. Lawson's very good at penetration, finding gaps. And understand this, the zone, you got it. Mr. Hansborough was 2 for 10 before he made a couple goals when they needed him at the end of that half. But containing him, playing a half-court zone defense, and knowing that you got some kid that can make threes, go for it. And that's a great strategy that Tad Mata had in that first half. All right, more college basketball in a moment. But first, we do have some college football news. As expected, Michigan has asked LSU for permission to talk to their head coach, Les Miles, about replacing Lloyd Carr. Now, Miles, of course, Played for Bo Schembechler. He was an assistant from 80 to 82 under Bo Schembechler. And he has a buyout in his contract. The only school he can go to under a buyout is the University of Michigan. The only thing they ask LSU is that they wait until after the SEC championship game to talk to Les Miles. But he could be headed to Ann Arbor. Stick around. When we come back, we'll look around the rest of the Big Ten ACC Challenge. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Dish Network. Get the most HD channels and the best HD DVR available from Dish Network. And in part by the 2008 Escape Hybrid. This is the UPS Halftime Report. Well, Diebler has been struggling throughout the start of this season. Not in the first half. Knocked down four threes, including that one at the buzzer. And as a result, Ohio State has a lead over the number two team in the nation, 32 to 29. Elsewhere in the Big Ten ACC Challenge, Gary Williams and his Terrapins at home. Sean Pruitt, it's a little lay-in right there. Illinois is down 53-48. Jerome Bernie with the putback dunk and a foul. Big time inside, getting on the glass. That's where they dominated tonight, getting the board, getting second chance points. And then Osby, tough shot in the paint. Maryland wins it 69-61. Eric Hayes with a big game from the guard position with 18 points, four steals as well. NC State and Michigan State. Darrell Summers drives to the hoop, up and under, plus one. And then Goran Sutan had a tremendous game. Sutan, big night. Sutan just got up down the floor, made things happen inside. Dominant player now, getting big double-doubles, which Michigan State needs. But Drew Neitzel, Jay, is the guy. Well, when he can catch and shoot, you don't make him put the ball on the floor and take challenge shots. He's going to knock those down. Their transition game, excellent all night long against NC State. Boston College and Tyrese Rice looking to remain unbeaten this year. 30 seconds to go in the first half. This is a long three by Rice. Rice had a big night going five for eight, shooting those threes, 28 points. But BC, 21 points off of 17 offensive rebounds against Michigan. That was Ron Coleman there. And then Charlie Spears gets the easy layup as the defense looks away. And Boston College goes to 5-0 and on the season, remaining unbeaten. Now, if you look at our tote board, first of all, here's a couple of scores. Penn State over Virginia Tech right now, 30-22. to So hoping Penn State can hold one up for the Big Ten and get their third victory this year because it's 7-2 and right now. If you go back to 99-2000, this thing has absolutely been owned by the ACC, including in the NCAA tournament and in the Final Four. It's a shutout. Now, 
these are two great conferences. Obviously, a lot more college basketball history in the ACC, but why are they dominating so much? Well, first of all, the ACC is better at the bottom. I mean, the bottom teams in the ACC are better than the bottom teams in the Big Ten. I mean, that, that's clear. And this, this ACC Big Ten Challenge or Big Ten ACC Challenge, Jim Delaney's going to be mad at it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's about matchups more than anything else. It's an early season event. Uh, it's really about individual matchups because when you look at how the teams do at the end of the year, I mean, last year, Ohio State made it to the Final Four. No ACC teams made it. When you look back to 2005, North Carolina did win the national championship that year, but Illinois and Michigan State made the Final Four. So what does that say about the Big Ten? They're, they're doing pretty Pretty well at the end of the year when it really counts. This is building toward the end of the year, I and mean, they get this lovely little trophy. <laughs> yes. Who, who wouldn't want that? It's not little either. It's pretty big. I, I think I got that trophy when I coached Fordham in seventy seventy one as coach of the year. That twenty six and three team looks like the same trophy. <laughs> so cool. my name's is, that, on the back. is that why you keep drinking out of it? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you know, a little orange juice. But anyhow, getting back to what goes on with that conference, I, I really look at the ACC. Very athletic conference. They got a lot of great athletes, a lot of speed and quickness, and not afraid to go up and down. And I think that's that's something where the Big Ten, they're so, we're seeing it tonight. They want to play the half-court game like Ohio State because they know that's how they can beat a team like North Carolina. But when you have the great athletic players and the defensive players that come along with it, like when you look at Duke, like when you look at Carolina when Ty Lawson's healthy, and have the depth that these teams have, and go back to the bottom teams. We saw a young Maryland team tonight take on Illinois to get the job done. And when you look at, I think, Clemson when they get John Mays back, a very talented team. Florida State's had some good wins this year. And when you look at the balance, the whole thing, even a Tyrese Wright, in Boston College. They can dominate with athletes. When you coached Fordham, did you beat Manhattan in the Battle of yes, the Bronx? Yes, we did. Oh, well, Fordham, did, for Fordham, Fordham did that tonight. Fordham beat Manhattan that. in the Battle of the Bronx. That. Derek, still oh, you were born then. Derek Wittenberg, <laughs> of course, is the head coach yes. at Fordham, who, of course, was one of the stars under Jim Valvano in 1983 when they won the national championship. How appropriate here on Jimmy V Week. Wittenberg has no credibility. He's still, he's still insisting that was a pass to Lorenzo Charles. Yeah. Until he admits it was a shot, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Stick around. More Jimmy V. Week in a moment. This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? This halftime report is delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Second half coming up, but we want to remind everyone that you should be joining ABC Saturday in primetime. Missouri with a win will go to the national championship game. Oklahoma, remember, is the only team that's beaten Missouri this season. That's Saturday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Back to college basketball. UMass at Syracuse. Gary Forbes on the break. Pass to Chris Lowe. Gets the layup, and it was 98-95 UMass. And Gary Forbes with a long three, and UMass wins at the Carrier Dome. You know, they lost at Northern Iowa. They have some big wins now. This gives them nothing but confidence to challenge Xavier in the 8-10, but giving up 100 points, Jay, I mean, you score 100, give up 107. Yeah, usually when Syracuse scores 100 points, they're going to win, especially at home, but Ricky Harris had a magnificent game with 25 points. All right, Georgetown facing Old Dominion, a team that got them last year, and John Thompson the third, his dad coach, this guy's dad, Patrick Ewing Jr., who's thinned up, Knocks down a three. Get the three, but then go inside to Mr. Roy Hibbert because he is maybe the best in the country at doing this. Reads it, gets double teamed, and get rid of it. Get the assist inside. It's Austin Freeman there, and then Freeman from the outside, Jay, as well. Well, Freeman is a really, really solid player. 11 points in this game. Georgetown shot 52% and held Old Dominion to just 31% from the field. An outstanding defensive performance by Georgetown again. 66-48 is the final. Hibbert finishes with a double-double, 14 and 10. Our second half is coming up. Ohio State up by three. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Lexus December to Remember sales event, now through January 2nd. And a diamond is forever. Welcome back to Jimmy V Week here on ESPN. Starting tonight and running right through Tuesday. A great chance to see a lot of terrific basketball and raise money for a good cause. It's the Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dish Network. With the ACC already having clinched the challenge for the ninth year in a row. But Ohio State trying to pull off an upset over number two North Carolina here. It's sold out. 
Value City Arena in Columbus. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, and America's got a new guy to talk about now. Tell us about John Diebler. Well, Diebler is a guy that came into this game, was four for 35, two for 24, shooting threes. They're looking for a third scorer. He's the all-time leading scorer in high school basketball. He went bananas, scored 12 in the last 15 points. Shot one from Toledo, baby. He let that one go from Toledo. He's not afraid to shoot him. He made four big threes, and the last one off the glass. There's no way he called that off the glass. <laughs> the score of the game, the tempo of the game, and the speed of the game certainly is a way Ohio State would love to play. And if you would have told Fan Martin that he would be up to and Kufus would be 0 for 6, he would have said, you're drunk, and, and again, I don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> and again, keep in mind, Carolina is without Ty Lawson, their outstanding point guard, out again because of a sprained right ankle. And that affects the word we talked about. Tempo, tempo, tempo. Ellington a save. Now nearly turns it over. Shot clock is down to seven. Ellington to the rim. Didn't get the rim. And Ohio State will take over. He was unable to get the ball on the glass. Size inside. Just the presence of seven-footer. Long arms. Kufus. He's got to go a long way to become a good defensive player. He's still a little bit lack, lacking in that area. Good matchup of blue guys, Lighty and Ginyard. Long rebound of the Butler miss right back to him. Carolina basketball, rebound Dion Thompson, a guy that Roy Williams wants to see a lot more rebounding from. You know, Bobby Fraser can make some shots. He's going to start looking for an open shot as well. Ginyard off the glass. Ginyard just a tenacious performer, a defensive dynamo. See two of the better defensive players in Lighty and Ginyard. Carolina back within one. Ohio State 4-1 in the year. Carolina ranked second and 5-0 and oh so far this season. Lighty missed Goofus. He had a guy on his back. Wow. Got the ball. Found Butler for three. Butler is so calm. Such a calm effect on the team out of the perimeter. Plays with such confidence. Thompson over Goofus. Got a good look in the zone, right in the three second yep. area. You got to convert those. They had a few of those in the first half that they couldn't cash in. And now Thompson is called for the foul as we go to Doris Burke. Well, guys, that last pass into the middle of the floor is exactly what Roy Williams would like to see against this zone. He was disappointed. Didn't think they did a good, good job moving the ball or themselves. He said, too many guys worried about the missed shots. He said, we got some good looks. On the defensive end, guys, they were concerned about Butler's penetration. He got off for 10 points for. They want to do a better job keeping him out of the paint, and while not giving up that three-point shot, he wants some assistance on Butler. Diebler just missed his first look of the second half. It'll be a hell of a ball, and Ohio State is going to take over. North Carolina's effectiveness will be their transition game. That'll be their number one priority when they have Lawson. Well, tonight, that's taken away from them. They don't have any kind of transition that you normally would see because of Lawson's ankle injury. He's sitting right there. Well, as much as Roy Williams would love to have Lawson in there, he doesn't mind a little adversity. In the Davidson game a couple of weeks ago, when they went right down to the final seconds, he gathered his team in a huddle, and he said, you know what, guys? This is good for us. Playing all these road games at Ohio State, at Kentucky, at Penn, at Rutgers in the next couple of weeks, all of that is good for Carolina as well. Well, we get you ready for the season in the ACC. Kufus. And a block by Ellington. Ellington all the way draws the foul. Try to attack the basket. Somebody's doing a little bit more of drive. College basketball presented by Cars.com, a part of Jimmy B. Week. is on ESPN2 Saturday at 2 Eastern. These same North Carolina Tar Heels will be in Lexington to take on a Billy Gillespie's Kentucky Wildcats. Ellington shaken up a little bit on that drive and foul. Can't afford to lose him, especially with that zone. They need that three-point shot. Take him to go. Tries to split the defense. Ted Hillary with the goal of block. Terrific crew here tonight. Ted Hillary, Jimber, Ed Corbett. Shooting right into the student section. Tay Ellington played in high school with Gerald Henderson, who I feel is going to be a star at Duke. Very athletic. I was so impressed with Duke last night. I really mean that. I told Roy today at lunch. Roy and his wife, Wanda, 
She made the journey here. We're talking. He sang their praise as well. So they got nine legitimate yeah. big-time players. That's pretty good. A Wisconsin team, a team that does not get blown out very often, and they they were beaten by 25 by Duke. It was 23 at the half. Well, Duke's got three lethal three-point shooters with Paulus and certainly Taylor King and Shire. Shire might be the best six-man in America this year. Ellington looks like he's struggling just a bit as he gets back down on defense. Kufa, such a quiet game, and now Fraser comes up with a steal. Great move right there. Hansbro in one. What a terrific move. Protected the basketball, got the conversion inside, scored in transition off the steal. Watch this right now. Kick it out and watch him seal the defense. So he protects the basketball. Very unique. Has great scoring ability. And here's an oddity to Hansbro, who's been going to the free throw line over 11 times a game. This is his first attempt tonight. And he's a very good free throw shooter. Ellington, a little bit shaken up, has come out of the game. Well, playing now without Ellington and Lawson, one of the premier backcourts in America. Landed hard on his back, standing up as he gets some medical attention on the bench. Butler with an answer to the other end. I'll tell you what, he's going to have a big year this year in a big ten. You can see the confidence yeah. level. He knows it's his team. This is my team. Michael Connolly's not there. Danny Green with a turnaround. That's one of the guys they're looking for to get open for that shot in the middle of the zone. Well, he got into the medium range jump shot area, spotted the gap in that zone, and took advantage of that gap. Roy Williams mentioning Green specifically as a guy who could help out against the zone. <laughs> Fraser's got good hands. Oh, Finally, his first field goal. You can see his skills offensively. A lot of finesse. Comes in, averaging better than 18 a game. Had a huge night against Syracuse last week, but a very quiet one against a and and a quiet one so far tonight. Hansbro off to Ginyard. Nice diagonal pass by Hansbro. Run it through the zone. Ginyard with the good hands to make that catch. That might have said, if I could only have him for two years in terms of Lucas, yeah. with B.J. Mullins coming in, or could it be one year and out, just like Odin? Look at Butler just shred the defense but missed the runner. You know, talking about what his team could have been, and those kids all stayed in school. What about North Carolina with Morgan Williams, right? Would he be a senior? He would be a senior Brandon this year, Wright. yep. Hansbro again. How would you like the front court of Hansbro, Williams, and Ruff? Not bad. Green a miss. Out of bounds to the Buckeyes. It has been a hard-fought affair here tonight. They're all tied up. What a game they had last year down in Carolina. We'll revisit that when we come back. entertaining games of the last season won by the Tar Heels by nine down at the Dean Dome you saw Greg Oden he had not yet started playing was still coming back from the wrist injury Hansborough had a big game Ron Lewis a departed senior had 30 for the Buckeyes but you had it right right there at the end I'll tell you what Ohio State is a lot better than I, and they went all the way to the national championship game it was a, a sign of things to come they had to change their style a lot with when Odin got healthy and now they're trying to play a little bit quicker, maybe not as fast as they played in that game last year, as they turn it over again. Ginyer, it's a block and a bucket. That's Carolina. See the way they ran out of the break. Transition. Up, up, and away. Run, baby. Run. Dean Smith would love. He'd say, yes, that's my protege right there. Look at the way they ran the ball up the court. Get the good angle. Take it up. There's the block. Score. Diebler the foul, Ginyard the bucket to go into the line looking for the three-point play. I love those guys, GQ, Ginyard and Green. GQ? You got three of them now? 
I say Q? Yeah. Oh, I like Q. G square. G square. Yeah, G square. Yeah. Oh, G Is there square. another one? <laughs> <laughs> I was never too good at math. <laughs> I could take trigonometry. Coop is to the bench and to Williger back in for the Buckeyes. Butler left alone. Britton Thomas now manning the point for the Tar Heels. Again, it bears repeating, no loss in the sprained ankle. He was a game-time decision, has not played. Thomas has a lot of experience, gave some positive minutes in his career. Part of the national championship team, yes, not sir. a huge part, but part of that team back three years ago. Green, another block inside. Hunter protecting the rim. Well, he's long and athletic. Hunter, junior college player. Played a lot of minutes last year. There he is, stands in that zone. Says, thou shalt not enter thy lane. That's one of the commandments. A guy who didn't really start playing serious basketball until his senior year in high school. The floater, Ginyard, a little strong. Hunter wraps up the rebound. Pullers become more of a scoring point guard rather than a distributor. Lighty short, and the rebound of the heels. Lighty's another guy that's got point production like Deeb Lahas. Thomas a travel, yep. Let's go to Doris Burke. Guys, the word initially on Wayne Ellington after hurting his lower back on this dribble drive to the basket is that he is available. Now, he's on the bench right now with some ice on that lower back. We'll see if he comes back in the next couple of minutes. I'll tell you, Doris, you talk about growing up and you talk about maturing as a team. To have to go on a road and beat a team like Ohio State without your starting guards and then talk about beating BYU on a neutral against a veteran BYU team. And you see Ellington just at the end of that report by Doris checking back into the game for North Carolina. They are closing out on Diebler after he hit four first-half threes, including one that he banked in right at the horn. He's more than just a jump shooter. Misses that one of the rebound to Thomas. He's got the mentality of a scorer. You can see it in his eyes. Back play right there. Diebler, by the way, four for 11, both from the field and beyond the arc. Every shot he's taken has been a three. I mean, that's not a phenomenal percentage, but when you shoot it, two for 24 from the three coming here, that's pretty good. Hunter on the glass. Terwilliger's got it, and a fresh 35. Great effort by Ohio State on the glass. Another one. And a foul. Gave him four opportunities. Let's go to Ryan Burr in the studio for a Sports Center 30 at 30 update. Uh, Redskin safety Sean Taylor was shot to death in what police suspect was a random burglary, and there are no indications the player was targeted or knew his assailant. Uh, police have no suspects in the shooting and have asked the pub public to come forward with any information. O.J. Simpson pleaded not guilty at his arraignment today of kidnapping and armed robbery charges. Trial has been set April 7th. Sports Center after the game, ESPN News always on. Well, fortunately, Dick, as is sometimes the case, uh, crime and sports intersecting, and we have two examples of it right there. And again, the, the Taylor tragedy just rocking uh, the NFL the last couple of days, and our sympathies go out to his family. Very sad to see a young athlete taken down so young, 24 years of age, with a world of talent. Fraser from the corner. Rebound, Ohio State, and they gave it away. Two Buckeyes were there, and they just left the ball. Thompson came up with the loose ball in the jam. They got a good look for Fraser. He needs one for confidence. He has to have one go down. Played last year with that foot injury. It was tough. No Kufus, no Hansbro. And no finish there on the driving layup for Evan Turner. That was a quick move by the 6-6 Turner from out of Chicago. Ellington banks it in. Are you serious? Great shooters. It always goes their way. He's even got a smile yeah, on his he face. he should have a smile He's got a smile. There's, there's, no, there's no way, baby. I mean, is the bank open as Timmy B is the side? Is the bank open? Look at Lawson. Lawson says, I love it. I'll tell you what, they got to get Lawson to help me. There's Ellington. I got a feeling poor Billy Gillespie's going to see the loss in there Saturday. <laughs> Carolina by seven. 
Ryan Byrne in the studio. Penn State and Virginia Tech on ESPN2. Deron Washington here for the Hokies, stepping it up and knocking it down. But Penn State quickly the other direction, and Taylor Battle steps back, pulls up, and book it. 38 28 at the half. Penn State on top. Couple scores to get you. UMass 14 three pointers. They beat Syracuse 107 to 100. Guys? I sound like an old NBA score. 107 to 100. <laughs> what happened to the 2 3 zone? They shot the threes against it. Travis Ford, it's got to be a cloud ball. A three here that doesn't fall for Matt Terwilliger. Carolina has got its largest lead of the night right now. Green is open. Thompson getting on the glass tonight, and it's paying dividends. Big time offensive rebound. A nine-point lead now for the Tar Heels. Butler, and it's a foul called on Danny Green. A timeout on the floor. Roy Williams' team is out to its largest lead of the night, up nine on Ohio State. It is Jimmy V week here on ESPN, and running right through the Jimmy V Classic on Tuesday night. A chance to raise some money for a great cause, JimmyV.org, or 1-800-4-Jimmy V. There's the Women's Classic on Monday, the Men's Classic, a doubleheader, K-State, Notre Dame, and USC Memphis coming up Tuesday from New York. It's a very, very important week. I want to tell you about a moment that I'll never forget. In Sarasota, the Dick Vitale Jimmy V fundraiser that we had there in May at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. And at the end of the night, we thought the night was done. Dick and Mike Krzyzewski get up. Mike Krzyzewski says, I'll offer four tickets to Carolina Duke. You say, I'll offer transportation from Sarasota up to the game in Durham. And within moments, $100,000 had been raised by a gentleman who's in this building here tonight. He's a big Buckeye fan, Jim Flowerberg. He's the president and CEO. Check smart. There he is. Come on, Jim. Smart. Wow, thanks, buddy. A hundred G's he gave us. And then right after that, I looked at Patino and all the people there. I said, what about Flo What about Louisville and Kentucky? Right. Then I realized we didn't have Louisville and Kentucky on ESPN. <laughs> so we said Florida and Kentucky. <laughs> and Chris Sullivan of Outback gave us a hundred thousand as well. It really is one of the most remarkable things I've ever seen is the jumper goes in for Thompson. The night was over. I mean, and then <laughs> you and Coach K just... Made $200,000 out of thin air for the V-Pound. Well, we got 1.3 for the 9 million, but I will tell you this. All the 50s and 100s mean so much. So call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V with whatever you can afford. Kufus, not his night at the offensive end. Not getting the good angle inside. He has he struggled in games against Texas A&M and North Carolina. Had a very big game against Syracuse, a very big game against VMI, but he's finding out about the physical nature of college basketball play against top-tier teams. Also size, you got DeAndre Jordan, the yeah. seven-footer inside, giving some help with Texas A&M, and a lot of size here tonight against him. Here he is now matched up. Hansbro forces him. See, he doesn't get a good angle. That shot's almost an impossibility. You got to get five points if you make that. <laughs> Kufus is one for eight, three turnovers tonight, four points. This game of basketball is really a lot about angles, getting good angles. Now he's trying to drive on Hansbro and misses the runner. That was a good move, though, yeah. Dan. That was an excellent offensive move. He has the patience against the zone, slides somebody down the gut, slides somebody into the foul line area. Right at the foul line area, there it is. Thompson with a jump hook. He's had a big night. Great execution. Just on cue. Fly. Just file a guy and bring him up into that foul line area after you move the ball along that sideline. Patience, patience, patience. A nice night for Thompson with a dozen points and five rebounds to go with him as Butler is fouled by Bobby Frazier. And we go to Doris Burke for more on Thompson. Yeah, what a changed man, guys. At one point, close to 300 pounds. A lean, mean 230 right now, guys. And over the summer, Sean May and Marvin Williams in pickup games at Carolina were really after him, rags him about soft finishes and not rebounding in traffic. Well, job well done, gentlemen. <laughs> He's getting it done here tonight with five off the glass. Carolina has extended its lead to 11. Whitey and the rebound to Hansborough. Not getting any good looks now against Carolina's defense. Look at this. Ellington behind the back. Hunter with another block. His fifth. 
Carolina comes back out with the loose ball. And Green is fouled before the shot. You know, Roy Williams' club has done a better job here in the second half, attacking the defense, attacking that zone. Hall of Famer has done a phenomenal job. Kansas here. Ten years was an assistant on that sideline. A winning percentage of better than 80%. 80%. Amazing, with over 500 wins. Best among active coaches. Hansborough had it, lost it. Two on one. Nice pass. Whitey's got a catch that converted. Pat shots. Shot selection so important. Carolina's quieted the crowd. Yeah, and Ellington looks okay back from that lower back injury, although he missed the shot. A good elevation, good bounce off the floor. Crowd has been a little quiet. Ohio State 3 for 20, make it 3 for 21 in the second half. They shot horrendously against Texas A&M, 24%. It's a lot of it shot selection. Green, rebound Kufus. Diebler, four threes in the first half, has not been heard from here in the second half. Well, Ellington really up in his face, not giving him any good looks. Kufus, left hand jump hook. Nothing falling, but that was a good play. And that was a good offensive maneuver. Yep. Right across the lane, just didn't go down. Thompson making things happen tonight, and he's fouled. I remember we were talking to Rick Pitino. He was in the recruiting process of Kufus, and he told me that he sang his praises. He loved his footwork, his offensive skills, size. You talk about a team, Louisville. I think they're going to be a dangerous team, especially when they get Palacios back to get another baseline performer. And I think Sosa is finally going to elevate his game. He has to become really an outstanding guard. He's been struggling early. Wholesale changes now. Three new Carolina players come in. Barry, look at the size of these guys that come in. You know what's amazing in college basketball? Think about this. The court has never changed the geography of the court, the landscape. 94 by 50. But the bodies have gotten bigger, yep. stronger. So what I'm simply saying, maybe you should make the court a little bigger. I mean, <laughs> then, the then there wouldn't be room for you to sit here. <laughs> You'd have to move back. As Lighty draws the foul. Lighty to the line. Oh, do we come back? Ohio State down 11 to Roy Williams and the Tar Heels on the first night of Jimmy V Week here on ESPN. Tonight on SportsCenter, all of Wednesday's top 10 college hoops action. Plus, are the Cowboys way too much in awe of Brett Favre? And hear why Bill Belichick can't stop raving about Ed Reed. Sports Center after the game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Dish Network. Get the most HD channels and the best HD DVR available from Dish Network. Well, you want to talk about a legend. Wow. You want to talk about well, wait, wait, wait. Legend, <laughs> Jack Nicholas, are you kidding me? I had one of the greatest thrills of my life. I spoke in Miami at a function. After the function, a couple of guys come up to me and said, we're very close friends with Jack Nicholas. And we understand that you love playing tennis. I said, Jack would like to play and should play some tennis. I said, really? So I said, yeah, let's go to his house. I go to his house. Are you serious? He has, serious, yeah. has grass courts in the backyard. Yeah. And I'm telling you, he can flat out play tennis. <laughs> he schooled me, gave me an education. But then he sent me a beautiful picture, wow. autograph. What a thrill. He's a beautiful family, just a class, class guy. That might be the only story of yours I've never heard. I've never heard I that know, story. It's a true story. <laughs> Jack Nicholas, that is a true story. Call Jack up and ask him. How about the drought here for Ohio State? Lighting misses the free throw. The Buckeyes have missed their last 15 shots from wow. the field and are shooting only 25% on the night. Tell you, Fab Mata, he's done a great job sitting next to Archie Miller. He's the brother of Sean Miller. Yep. Done a phenomenal job with Xavier. Got another win tonight. They beat Oakland uh, handily tonight after that big win over Indiana on the weekend. I think Sean is headed for big-time stardom and coaching. Has the perfect personality. Players love him. He was an assistant at Xavier yep. with that Mata. Mata's been successful everywhere he's gone. Hansbrough, a couple of pump fakes, but still has it swatted away. Shot selection so important. Really teed by the guy with the rock in his hands right now, Butler. 
He's the high scorer in the game with 17. He needs some help. He's going side to side. Hunter from just inside the arc. Dallas Lauderdale discarded Hansbro, got the rebound, but nothing is falling for the Buckeyes. Just reminiscent of their game against Texas A&M. Couldn't make shots in that second half. Same here. That model was an assistant at one time of the Herb Sendon out of Miami of Ohio, who's had some great wins this year, Charlie Collins. I mean, they beat Xavier. In fact, they beat Xavier, they beat Mississippi State. Ohio State has missed 17 shots in a row, shooting under 25%, getting out-rebounded by 13, and amazingly, they're only down 10. Well, that's a bit of pattern when you think about it in terms of their loss, when they lost to, uh, as I said, the game a and yep. Thomas on the drive. Ellington the pull up. He's got beautiful form. Can't allow him to shoot that. He's the Duke of the jump shot. Duke Ellington. 16 for Wayne Ellington. He's the high scorer for the Tar Heels. This is solid stretch North Carolina's going through. BYU, Ohio State, now Kentucky playing without Lawson. Call going against the Buckeyes. A college basketball presented by Cars.com, all a part of Jimmy B. Week, is on ESPN2 Saturday at 2 Eastern. These same Tar Heels will be in Lexington to take on Kentucky. And for more on the Cats, let's bring in Andy Cats. Well, thanks, Dan. Ramon Harris came back for Kentucky. He had a stress fracture, played against Stony Brook, but they are still missing Jody Meeks, who's got a stress fracture in his pelvis. He's out for a couple more weeks. That happened on November 7th. And Derek Jasper, who Billy Gillespie told me really is the heart and soul of their best playmaker, he's still out for a couple more weeks with a micro fracture yeah, of his this, knee. Missing those guys, Andy, is big on the perimeter because really they got some solid players in Patterson and Legion, Bradley and Crawford, but they need those other two guys. Hansbro, good position inside and he'll finish already a double-double prior to that shot tonight. Hansel now with 13 and 10. He just keeps going on and on and on. And a foul by Quentin Thomas. He's like the buddy rubber man, just keeps going on the and on. Yeah, he's got quite a motor. He keeps yes, going, sir. Hansbro. Keeps, keeps and, going and going. And, and Roy Williams, you can phrase the question any which way you want. The answer is always the same. He says that Hansbro is as focused and determined and hardworking as any athlete that he's been around. And you know what's really great? He loves college. He absolutely has a passion and love for wearing that Carolina blue. Works six to eight hours a day in terms of doing the offseason and all kinds in terms of weight training. And his diet, too. Uh, Roy Williams says he is just Deeble. impeccable in his diet. Deebler with his first three and a half, his fifth of the game. Well, no matter what happens in this game right now, win or lose, the situation is they found Deebler. Yeah. Deebler at least is a guy that's going to give them some point production on the win. First field goal for the Buckeyes in 10 minutes and 53 seconds. What a drought. Well, also a drought, but also credit North Carolina. Yeah. I think they've improved these, this year defensively. At least in the games you and I have seen, BYU. I know Roy didn't feel that way early in the, in the season. And again, no Lawson has not played a second in this game. Oh, Thompson was not looking for the pass out there. Got a chance to get back in this game. Lawson looking on, unable to play because of the sprained ankle. Hey, a funny sighted shooter out of there. Roy Williams took off his warm-up top underneath. Yankees. A New York Yankees, Yankees. t-shirt. He loves the Yankees. The kid from Asheville, North Carolina, said he was listening to his radio in 1956 as a six-year-old. Mickey Mantle hit one left-handed and right-handed. He's been a fan ever since. They're fans of David Lighty right now here in Columbus. Yes, They're sir. back within eight. The Buckeyes, Buckeyes love that three. We've seen the three could change the game. The complexion quickly. Ginyar turns it over. Diebler. Oh, Diebler with the chance. Might get a T.O., baby. The heels might get a T.O. Get a T.O., Lord Williams. Get a T.O. The Buckeyes are back. The Buckeyes are back. How do you not score for 11 minutes and then get eight points in 54 seconds? Well, you know, you hit two big frees and then the steal. Diebler with the jam. Lighty's going to show that he's going to light it up. That's a guy that wait for him to give him some scoring as well. Lighty and Diebler. Look at Diebler. How about left, the left-handed left jam, left-hand huh? jam. 
All-time leading scorer in the history of Ohio basketball. 41 a game. That meant if he got 25, he had to come back and get like 60. <laughs> 60. Butler, Lighty, and Diebler have combined for 44 of Ohio State's 51. Costa Kufus, a virtual non-factor with the offensive end tonight, not on the floor right now. You know, Roy Williams thought things were going really well there. And all of a sudden, he's got a battle. How nice. about Danny Green with a beautiful feed to Deion Thompson? Got into a little triangle by getting the ball at the foul line and two guys on the baseline. The lead back up to eight for Carolina, nearing the final four minutes. Lighty, a good look. Hunter kept the ball alive. Very active, long lead, athletic. He's Very also got five blocks in this game for the Buckeyes. Got an interesting four minutes coming up. We sure do. And we're going to the timeout with 3.52 to play. Number two, Carolina up six. But don't count the Buckeyes out just yet, Dickie B. The Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Dish Network. A good game here tonight. Diebler and the Buckeyes closing on the heels. This ESPN telecast is available in high definition on ESPN HD, presented by Olivia. As the Buckeyes try to mount a comeback, let's go to Ryan Burr in the studio for an update. We're hot. <laughs> Sports Center after the game. All of uh, tonight's top 10 college basketball action. Also, uh, are the Cowboys too much in awe of Brett Favre? Plus, Barry Melrose will be here. That's a rating spike. Back to you, Dick and Dan. All right, Neil, John, sorry, bad information on this end. Neil Everett, John Abuchagras standing by with the Sports Center after the game tonight on ESPN. What a night it has been here at Value City Arena in Columbus, North Carolina. Seemingly, Dick was cruising with a double digit lead and then eight points in about a minute for the Buckeyes, and we got ourselves a ball game. Well, all of a sudden, the three goes down twice. They only lost four games last year. Buckeyes won the North Carolina, lost to Wisconsin, and twice to the Gators. Lost to the Gators for the big prize. They've stepped up the intensity of the defensive end. The Buckeyes need every stop they can get. The shot clock is at five. Buckeye fans don't want to hear about the Gators beat them at football. Oh, what a, what a backbreaker that is. Elton, just like in Vegas against BYU, comes up with a huge late three. Did it against Davidson as yep. well. Made big threes in every game with really in tight matchups. How much would you like to see in a guy? Not afraid to take the big shot and convert the big shot. Bobby Frazier Good with defense. a big block on Jamar Butler. Frazier, solid job defensively right there. He's had his hand in the passing lane all night long as well. You know, he's a kid that's not going to beat you with great speed. Hansbro does what he does best, get to the foul line. Well, Frazier did a great job there. He blocked the shot, then he came back up on the other end of the floor and made the direct pass into the post. Good pass into the post. The foul on a fellow hunter, his second. Kufus will be coming back in. Hansbrough came into the game an 81% shooter from the line. And of course, as soon as you say that, he misses one, but that's the way it goes. You know, North Carolina's got the matchup with Kentucky on the road. But what about Ohio State? Going to have to go on the road and play at Butler at the Hinkle. That's a little payback saying, thank you guys for giving me a chance coaching up Butler. And he's going back there. Saturday night, 7.30, that ESPNU. Lighty. Butler's got that great backcourt, green and gray. Yeah, another G square. The yes, two sir. seniors who led them to a championship up in Alaska. Just like Morello Ravidal standing backcourt at Xavier. Mass execution. And is fouled on the floor. Hansbrough really hesitated. Should have caught that ball went right up quickly with a layup. What's amazing about him? He never looks tired out there. Look at those eyes, though. Look at those eyes. The focus, the intensity, the emotion, the passion. That's Roy. Passionate. Still trying to impress people on the sidelines. And look, I want to show I can coach. Roy, we know you can coach, baby. Look at the Hall of Fame. Go up to the basement Hall of Fame, that beautiful facility. And you see Roy right there with all the greats. Turned out right. Hansborough misses the front end. Kufus. 
two-man game, Diebler and Kufis. Diebler inside for a hard-earned deuce and an injury as he comes down hard on the floor. Looks like maybe the left wrist. You know, we've seen Dan. Why, he was such a big scorer in high school here tonight. And then it's five Ellington. on four because of the injury, and Ellington knocks down the jumper at the other end, and Keebler now left elbow would be the guess. They're trying to shake it off. Not just an outside shooter, Dan. No, he can take the ball to the basket. He's got scoring ability. He's a scorer. I mean, we've seen him. And obviously, look at his high school record. The all-time leading scorer in the history of Ohio. 41 a game last year. 3,208 points in his career. Diebler with a 19. Ellington with a career-high 21 for North Carolina. In about six weeks, come back and see me. You'll see Diebler object double figures. Misses the three. Rebound, Guignard. He's not bashful. Another block, this time by Lighty. Man, they are getting after they are it. They're physical inside. Yep. Jim Trussell like to have some of that battle going on in the interior. Green. Hands throw hands again. I mean, he really goes after the ball. Look at him diving. The All-American. Look at the All-American. How he wants the ball. I mean, look at that hustle. Are you kidding me? Scrapping it, clawing, hustling. Coaches love seeing players play so hard. Coaches love seeing kids laying it all out. Look at the hustle. Look at the energy. Look at them diving, scrapping, hustling. Oh, wow. Both coaches have to love the effort and not the execution at times here tonight, but they have been getting after it here tonight. Time now for our PlayStation 3 game track. A nine-point lead for number two, North Carolina. Another double-double ho-hum for Tyler Hansbrough. Costa Kufus just could not finish at the offensive end. Not a big factor here tonight. John Diebler knocked him down threes left and right, and the guy whose name doesn't appear on there, Wayne Ellington, another big night for the Tar Heels. Ellington is certainly sensational here. Made big, big shots. Came back after being injured as well here in the game. But he's been a difference. He's been a difference maker. He's been a star. Hard to really fathom what it was like watching him and Henderson play together That's in high right. school. Can you imagine that? Big night for Ellington. Despite suffering a lower back injury earlier in the game that cost him a few minutes. Now you want to take time off the block. This is the way you really develop a team. Let me tell you this. It is very important this year to win the ACC. And I'll tell you why. Because you can get two games in Raleigh with the NCA, and then the next two, the regional, and Charlotte. Not bad. That means you don't have to leave that area to go to San Antonio. <laughs> and I personally think when it's all said and done, it's going to be a battle, big time, Duke and North Carolina, for that to happen. And keep an eye on Clemson as well. They got a Wednesday night date, Duke and Carolina, on ESPN in Chapel Hill, and then the, in February, and then the final Saturday of the regular season. You'll be in Cameron Indoor Stadium. And don't believe that it's not important to be able to get that opportunity to just play down the road at Raleigh and not at Charlotte. Another missed free throw. That last game at Duke, by the way, part of our Saturday Prime package here on ESPN. Diebler for three. Ellington a rebound. Put this one in the book. North Carolina. Kentucky the winningest program of all time. Carolina number two. They hook up two in the afternoon at the beautiful Rupp Arena. Passionate fans. Billy Gillespie will have a real challenge on his hands because I personally think I'm not a doctor, but just observing the warm-up today. I got a feeling Steve Robinson smiling. The assistant coach, I think Roy's going to smile because I think Lawson will play. They have won two games against good teams, BYU and Ohio State, without them. Give Bobby Fraser and Quentin Thomas some credit. Give everybody, Ellington and everybody else, some credit for stepping up in the absence of Lawson. But they don't win a national championship no. without Mr. Lawson. Just like UCLA and Collison. Exactly. So many injuries in your man been on the collegiate level already. Game has gotten so physical. Butler for three. 
And it's all but over now. North Carolina withstands a, a late second half rally by the Buckeyes and will go to 6-0. What great effort by the Buckeyes. Now they got Diebler, got him going, scoring. They're going to get Kufus back again. But remember, the real winner, all those people battling cancer, let's help them. Call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V. Or if you want to help me with my million-dollar grant for pediatric cancer, please go to my website, dickvitaleonline.com, and I'll tell you how you can make a donation. Let's beat that disease. Come on, America. Let's all get together. All you hoop fanatics that were ever thrilled by Jimmy V, thrilled when he won that national title, make a call. Whether it's 50, 100, 200, please make a call. 1-800-4-JIMMY-V. 66. Couldn't have said it better myself. 66-55. Carolina without Ty Lawson wins here in Columbus against the Buckeyes. Coming up next year on ESPN, it is SportsCenter. This has been a present of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Dick Vitale, Doris Burke, and our entire crew, I'm Dan Schulman, saying thanks for watching tonight from Columbus. Sports Center is next.